Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Well, welcome to some place I never thought I'd bring you during Digest episodes. Welcome to my work apartment in Chicago. We're going to do a three-part series here about reproduction federal blankets and how to care for them when you get them. We meant to do this all as one episode based around the release of the Gilbert Rulapaw blanket from Wombaw White & Company. We quickly found we had too much content and need to break it up. So this first episode is going to talk about the Rulapaw blanket and its specific stitch to put the U.S. on. It's called the couching stitch. We'll also talk about how to prep a blanket when you get it to do the stitch. Then as soon as I can get it done, we will follow up with an episode about what's called the blanket stitch. If the end of your reproduction blanket is fraying, this is one way to stop that if you'd like to. Finally, down the road, older blankets that are, have been in the market for a while, most of them use something called the chain stitch to put the U.S. on, and we want to show that for you. We'll even provide an outlet to get the U.S. pattern for the stencil. The Rula Paw blanket. If you've bought it, you see in the instructions it says to go ahead and, sh and uh, soak it and let it dry. When I got this blanket last week, the first thing I did is I took it, I put it in the bathtub in water as warm as I could stand it and let it in there for about five minutes. During those five minutes, I went ahead and agitated the blanket or shook it. I don't want to go as far as putting it in a commercial washing machine that's going to uh, really agitate it too much. I want to do this by hand in hot water, only as hot as I can stand it. Now we've taken our five pound blanket and it felt like a ton getting it out of there. I hung dry the blanket after that. The wool as woven will shrink down when it gets wet a little bit. We want to go through that process before we try to stitch the US on this or bind the end of it. The blanket's cared for, it's the way you see it now. We have two things we need to do to this blanket. First, we absolutely should put the U.S. in the center of it. And Brian White identified the stitch used in the Rulapaw blanket is not what we normally see in other reproduction blankets and other originals, the chain stitch. That's a stitch called the couching stitch. The first thing we need to do is we need to find the middle of the blanket. If you're looking to find the middle of a blanket to put the U.S. on, first fold it widthwise and then fold it lengthwise. That corner is the middle of the blanket and we'll work from there. So we found the center of the blanket. What we're going to do next is we're going to mark it. Uh, I've got it folded here, but I'm going to have to unfold it to put the template on. Two choices. First, we can use Taylor's chalk available at any big box store, whether a Joann's Michaels or any other store like this or a tailoring store. You're going to be able to use this to make a mark. I'm going to suggest one thing different. My pins are quilting pins and they have a fairly large head on them. This is going to become handy later on. So I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to go ahead and draw and I'm going to go ahead and run it into the middle of the blanket here so that when I'm done, the pin head is right at the corner of the blanket. Now that we've found the middle of the blanket, it's time to go ahead and put the U.S. on it. How do we do that? Well, if you've bought the Rulapaw blanket from Wamba and White, they went ahead and sent you a couple of pages. And let's take a look at what we've got here. First, we got a page of historical notes, details, and instructions. We'll set that to the side. The second thing Dan gave us and Brian gave us is the template of the U.S. that is on this original blanket. The first thing I'm going to recommend that you do is that you make a copy of your stencil. Now, this is just good practice. If you haven't done a lot of stitching and something goes wrong, it's gonna be fairly straightforward to find a yarn stitch shop near you and get some wool yarn. It's gonna be harder to replace this stencil. Make a copy, work off the copy, have the original. So, we've got a copy of the stencil. We're gonna go ahead and put it on. Let's open this blanket up. And remember I said, we're gonna keep this center. Here's where the pin's gonna help us. All right, so we've laid out the blanket here. You can do this on the floor. You can do it on a table. What I'm going to recommend, make sure you can get to the center of the blanket, which is where we need to work. We know center because the pin head is in the middle. I also want to see one edge of the blanket. That's going to allow me to make sure that my stencil sits on the blanket squarely. Remember, these U.S.s were applied uh, in haste trying to get blankets to the front. They weren't being done for perfect embroidery. So if you're off by just a little bit, it's probably going to be okay, but you want to take care with it. Putting the stencil on the blanket. 
remember, I said we were gonna use that pin head. The stencils that we have have a crosshair or a circle in the middle. We can just go ahead, find the middle, press on until we have our pin head in the middle of there. I'm gonna look down at the edge of the blanket and make sure I'm fairly squared up with it. And then I'm just gonna pin this stencil in place. Okay, well, we've pinned the stencil on the blanket. Let's learn to do the couching stitch. It actually takes two pieces of yarn to do, so let's learn how to do it. I've got an embroidery hoop here with some white fabric, and then and since it takes two pieces or two pieces of yarn, I'm gonna use contrasting colors here. I'm gonna use both a red and a navy so you can see how this works. We're gonna get the camera over my shoulder and we're gonna take a look at it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run my needle up in the end of my line, pull it through, and the knot's going to take. Like we said, the navy blue thread is going to be what you see on the top of the fabric. We're just going to pull it along the line that we have made here, and I'm just going to tack it out of the way. Now it's time to work with the red thread. So, And the red thread is just going to do a series of tacks. What we're going to do is we're gonna come up right next to where the blue thread started, pull it through. We're gonna go over and on the other side of the thread, right next to it, we're gonna put the needle back in and this is gonna capture the thread as we go. Now, one of the things we really like to see at Civil War Digital Digest is when the community gets involved and help people. Uh, living historian B.D. Pettit spent time creating his own video for this. And one of the things he mentioned in that video that I thought was sharp is he made sure to say, always come up on the same side of the laid thread and go back down on the same, on the same side every time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump forward and the same side as I put my needle up the first time, I'm going to come up again and then I'm going to go down right next to it. If we look at the top, we see the laid thread creating the design that we want, which will eventually become the U or the S. If you look at the back side, you'll see a series of diagonal lines that are the stitches from the bar tacks holding it. All right, so we've seen what the couching stitch looks like on a sample. It's time to go ahead and go for broke and put it on our blanket. Now, there's a couple of things I've added here. One note I want to make when I talked to Dan about what he was using for a needle, the recommendation was a darning needle. They're easy to pick up at any of those big box stores. I got a package of them with five or six needles for like $2.30. The other thing that I got was an embroidery hoop that was large enough to allow me to put the entire stencil in. I didn't know that was going to be the case, but I wanted to get at least one letter at a time, but it seemed like the hoop that had about an inch stout here was going to handle the blanket. You don't absolutely have to do this, but the portion of the blanket that I'm working on, I want to hold into place and I want to make it so it's easy to deal with. This is going to work well for me and geez, with a $230 blanket or blankets that are reproductions for sale that you're spending more than that on the used market, a $14 hoop is probably a good investment if it makes it easier for you. Let's talk about how we put the couching stitch on. Again, two pieces of the uh, yarn to use in making this. We need to split it up. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the yarn that I got with my stencil and something B.D. Pettit said when he was making his videos, he said, work the outside line, work the outside of the U, the top, and all the way around. I thought that made a lot of sense. We'll go ahead and do that here. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to work my way around the stencil. All I'm looking for is how long this uh, top string should be for this first piece. So there we go. And then I'm going to leave it a couple of inches longer. And then I'll go ahead and cut it here. I'll thread it up and get the end of it knotted so that we can lay that out. The word is that the yarn is a little bit close for the amount with these, so you want to be careful. Don't go too short. Making your knots, threading your needles, that's going to take a little bit of extra slop, but don't be too extravagant with it either. 
So as we're getting these needles ready to go, I've got a second. I just want to give a quick shout out to the guy hiding behind the camera today. When these things come up and we have to work fast, Jeremy and I can't always get together to shoot these at the same time. My friend Tim Troy has come in to give a hand this evening. You've seen his handiwork if you saw episodes we shot at the Aurora GAR Museum and the Frederick Schultz episode. Um, also coming up pretty soon, uh, we're going to release our first short film through Civil War Digital Digest. We shot that uh, about two years ago. It's finishing its festival run, and Tim was the director. It's a true story about Israel Richardson. You'll find a card up overhead to a, a trailer that we did for it. We'll finish the festival run in April, hope to have it out later this summer, and it's going to be a fundraiser for two places in preservation, Historic Fort Wayne, Detroit, and the Safe Historic Antietam Foundation, about where Richardson came in and went out of service. Check it out. All right, so let's lay that first stitch in. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to punch our way in here carefully. If it doesn't go just perfect the first time, it doesn't matter up and in, and there's our thread. Let's take the working yarn and start working with it. There, we'll come up next to it. And go back down and in. The laid thread on top it just works its way in. You can make the stitch smaller and shorter if you come to a corner, set it. We'll find that as we go around the bottom here as well. You see some of my paper stencil looks a little bit like bullet holes got shot through it. I haven't been sewing a lot recently because I've been making a lot of digest episodes and busy with work. So I'm getting my fingers back about me as far as figuring out where I am underneath. And if I come up wrong like that, who cares? Just pull the needle back and go again. So there we go. And we'll come up. And right next to it, we'll go back down, capturing the laid thread in there. Okay, so we're in the tight portion of the bottom of the U right now, and we need to get our laid thread to take the shape of our stencil. What that's going to mean is we're going to have to take these stitches, and we're going to have to go just a little bit closer together to make this shape work for us. So this will be a little bit tighter stitching than on the straight lines of the uprights of the U. Okay, so we're gonna get closer to the corner of the U here where the laid thread is gonna turn a corner and take a run down. We're gonna go ahead and work with the working thread, a stitch right into that corner. That allows us to turn the laid thread and work our way down. All right, so now that I'm really close to the end, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this out of the way and I'm gonna set the end of the laid stitch right through the end of the stencil. And I'm gonna pull that down underneath. That's gonna help me get right up here to the end. We did pretty well making sure that that wasn't too long because you could see the end of the thread coming out the other side of the needle was there. But now we need to work these last couple of tacks to keep it in place. All right, so the first section of our U.S. in the couching stitch started in the upper left-hand upright, came across, came down, up and around. Let's turn it over and finish it off. Now that we're there, we've pushed both the laid thread and the working thread underneath, and we'll go ahead. You could work a simple bar stitch in here, or you could just knot off underneath at the end, and then we'll clip tight to our knots here. All right, well, I've gone all the way through the stencil. The couching stitch is completely done on the U and the S. It's time to go ahead and see what it looks like. We'll start by taking the pins out. Moment of truth, here we go. We simply start ripping into the stencil. And since we've perforated and made stamp holes in it, it should start to come out pretty well. We want to take care. Remember, we are ripping around yarn, so just be gentle and work your way slowly out. All right, as we're getting close to finishing up, just a few notes. I ran over to the office supplies and grabbed a scissors of mine. Sometimes getting in here, I found using a paper scissors to be helpful getting underneath. Also, if I need to make a cut, I can get close to the yarn and make the snip. Again, I don't want to cut paper with my good sewing scissors, but I have a paper scissors here, and then I'm just working very carefully around the stitching, being cautious not to cut the stitching. 
We're going to finish it up and we'll see the rest of the U.S. in just a second here. Well, you tear the stencil out, clean up the schnibbles, and you're left with the couching stitch U.S. on the Gilbert Rollopaw blanket. Here's what it looks like. I hope you have a great time doing yours. Thank you for spending your time with us at Civil War Digital Digest. This has been a long one, but there's a lot of good content here. We're going to follow up as soon as possible with the blanket stitch episode so you can bind the edges of this or other reproduction blankets. I want to say a special shout out and thanks to all the patrons. Their financial support is doing a lot for historic preservation and making more of this possible. We'll see you soon.